Hi everyone, KDOT here. Today I'm going to start a series on how I handle magic in my setting, which is quite a bit different from the, the basic D&D and Pathfinder sorts of ways of dealing with magic. So I've said this before, and I'll say it again, I really like settings where magic is not something special. Magic is common as dirt. Everybody can have magic of some kind, even if it's as simple as something to tell the time of day, or to keep your clothes clean, or something along those lines. The reason that I say this kind of thing is because I like to think of magic as just another fundamental force of nature, much like gravity or electricity. And much like these other fundamental forces, I really like to think that magic has an opposing force as well. This is how counterspells would work in my realms. Also, like a fundamental force, magic is studied. There are colleges, there are schools. You can go and become an apprentice to a wizard and learn how to cast spells. It is a well-understood phenomenon that has many facets to it that you can dedicate yourself to and cause interesting things to happen by manipulating this fundamental force of nature. So things like magic items, spells from any of the handbooks, even some races, enchantments, all of those kinds of fantastical skills and stuff all follows kind of basic rules of this fundamental force of nature. And because it is well understood in my realms, because people study it and they comprehend what's going on with it and they can reproduce it just like any scientist would here in, in our world, they can produce new things, new magic items, they can manufacture at scale a magic sword or a potion or really whatever, as long as they can manipulate magic, they can push that magic into an object to then be used later. A really good way to think of how they manipulate and utilize these fundamental forces would be something along the lines of like a plastic mini or even a Lego set, where they're going to take all of the pieces that are well understood and put them together in a certain way and then poof, you have a new spell, you have a magic item, you have done something strange to change the way that reality works for someone or about an object or something like that. So because of the way that I look at magic and the way that I treat magic, I also understand that there's got to be a way out there to manipulate it in a more fine-grained way less like a plastic mini, more like what you would get if you had a 3D printer. So this way won't necessarily be as efficient as taking the pre-molded mini parts and sticking them together. You will never be able to use the fundamental force of magic to create a spell as efficiently as you would just taking a spell from the, one of the player's handbooks like Fireball and casting it. It is more difficult to do. Same thing with a 3D printer and a plastic model. To print a plastic model takes a lot longer than to just take it off the sprue and glue it together and paint it. So this is going to be where I kind of lead into a, the whole series on magic here. So I have my own homebrew rules for specifically the sorcerer, but really in 5th edition it touches a lot of the different spell casting classes, even the spell casting classes like Paladin and Ranger that really don't get many spells tend to have a few rules that, that are a little bit different than, than what you would find in the vanilla experience. There are a lot of new rules that I use for the sorcerer and a lot of homebrew rules that I use for the sorcerer. So there's actually going to just be a whole video on here's how I run the sorcerer, oh and these abilities and rules also apply to these other classes too. I also have for the sorcerer for 5th edition two new bloodlines for them to use, which change up how the sorcerer works in one case completely, and in another case pretty substantially. Both of them utilize less of the 
pre-built spells, and much more of the this fundamental force of magic that I have referred to. So these two bloodlines are called Channeler and Void. So for Pathfinder and 3-5, these are not necessarily bloodlines, these are more of prestige classes. I really like the prestige class system from this version of the game, so I tend to make those more than I tend to make other stuff for for my character classes, uh, and I will also explain how I change the rules for the Sorcerer for 3-5 Pathfinder stuff as well. So for each of these bloodlines or prestige classes, I'll really just take the Channeler in one video and the Void in another. And for each of those videos, I'll provide a link in the description to a Google Doc or a PDF or something. I'm not sure how that's going to work just yet that's going to describe how the mechanics of these new things work so that people can use them. There's also going to be a lot of discussion about the potential for adding new sorts of energy types in because in the 3.5 and Pathfinder world I had done a lot of work around that. I haven't really done so much of that work for 5th edition just because I haven't really thought about it all that much yet. I will include rules for all of that when I discuss the sorcerer and how I've homebrewed a lot of stuff for for that class and really all of the magic and casting classes. And of course also this will lead into a discussion about how the portals in Axiom work and how to build them and what they look like and all of that kind of thing. So that'll be its own video as well. So, with that, I think we'll wrap it up and keep it a little bit more brief this week. As always, I hope that you can go out, have some fun, play some games, do something cool, and most important of all, try to remember, be excellent to everyone else out there. It'll make the world a lot better for everyone. Thanks a lot. Have a good week.